But this is where all the action is tonight. This Australian is perfect in this country. Chad Reed has four checkers in four events in America. And with a win tonight, he can break Ernesto Fonseca's record of consecutive victories to start a career. Can Chad Reed run the table in EA Sports Supercross? That quest begins next. The Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. The battle for the 125 East Championship continues. It's EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick. Hello, everyone. I'm Art Ekman, and welcome to the fifth round of 125 East action. At the beginning of the season, most of us believed that Mike Brown, an American, would resume his 125 championship rivalry with South African Grant Langston. But somewhere along the way, a 20-year-old from Australia got off the boat. His name is Chad Reed. He's been absolutely outstanding, winning his first four of the year. This is the ladder he hopes to climb. Should he run the table, he would have the second longest consecutive seasonal win streak in 125 history. Carmichael had nine races back in 1998. Chad Reed has only eight, but can he sweep the season, David Bailey? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind, Art. This guy's got all the tools. He's got the speed, the confidence, and he proved it round two. He could do it with an injury. Here in Daytona last week, Langston with the lead. Reed putting the pressure on. They connect. Reed gets a little squirrely, but it works. Langston goes down. Here it is again. It looks like an intentional takeout, but it wasn't. It was just a racing incident. Langston was okay with it after the race, but still. Reed goes on and wins his fourth in a row. And it hasn't been that easy for his competitors, as you can see. Let's go down to Davey Coombs now for more on that. South African Grant Langston came into 2002 with a championship dream. But that dream has turned into a nightmare. And tonight, Langston hopes for his luck to change. Grant says he's in great shape and he feels fine, but he and his personal trainer, John Louch, are puzzled by the fact that Grant pumped up after just five laps while battling with Chad Reed at Daytona. And that might be the solution to Grant's whole season. He's got to beat Reed once to get him out of his head, but with this series halfway over, the time is now for Team Langston. Now with our speed stick track map, let's go to David. Well, we got a huge starting line here in the Superdome. The floor here is big. This is going to be the biggest track of the season. But once again, the whoop section right there. These are different than usual. It's a little steeper face. The riders are going to have trouble there. And as they approach the finish line jump, after that, everything looks pretty good. It's going to be a fast pace tonight. As uh, Chad Reed continues his quest for a perfect season, let's look at the uh, Suzuki storyline. Will Reed be unbeatable tonight? Can Mike Brown, the Yankee hopeful, break Reed's string? Where's the over 30 gang? Ward and Dowd, neither has a podium yet. Checking out the starting grid now for our opening qualifier. Mike Brown, second in points. Steve Boniface in a battle for third in the points. Larry Ward, the veteran. Grant Langston, boy, he'd love to win this heat race and get off to a good start here in the Astrodome. Maybe he should not win his heat race for a change. You know, it seems like every time he wins his heat, he has problems in the main event. Ward is sideways. The gate will drop between five to ten seconds. And the first qualifying heat for the 125s from New Orleans is underway. Boniface, number 36. Boniface, the home shot. He's got the whole shot as Grant Langston moves into second place. And it's been that kind of a season for these KTM guys. A lot more coming out of Boniface than I think a lot of people expected. He may not be surprised, but I think his teammate Langston and everybody else is. What a change from last year for Boniface. Well, he definitely is the big surprise, I think, of the 125 East. He had an unfortunate Daytona where he faded after getting a pretty good start, David. And, uh, well, took him out of the picture. He'd probably like to just try to fast forward through Daytona. As a matter of fact, I thought he had a problem there. Turns out he just got tired. That's the most difficult race on the circuit, so he needs to pick up his fitness before the outdoor season. Check out your favorite rider. They're all coming through on the loop section and down. Larry Ward. Larry Ward, number 10 on the Yamaha. That's the approach to the finish I was talking about. It seems simple, but there's so much that has to be done. So many decisions to make right there. He just got punished, so I don't know if Larry's going to be able to get up into the top nine straight into the main event out of this. Well, we watched Larry Ward go down. Langston took the lead for Boniface. So the teammate of KTM, Grant Langston.
finds them is back out in front. At the top of the screen, that last shot, Mike Brown making a block pass, moving up the spot. Still way behind the leaders. There's Brown, number three, on the Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Picks up another position into fifth. Paces that triple. That hurts. But one guy that can take it is Mike Brown. Back and forth they go to the Viejo out of Mexico. And Gibson, number 275. Now they're approaching the corner. This is where Larry Ward went down the first lap. Ambridge, who's number 115. Oh, he's going far to fire with Brown. Here's Langston, our leader, 111. He's won three of the last four qualifying heats. Boy, was that a ride at Daytona he took. Uh, it looked good. I thought, you know, he, he loves the sand. He likes rough track, outdoor style. Apparently so does Chad Reed. These guys had a great battle. Grant got a little tight. He's been, I think Reed's got everybody psyched out. He was definitely in the head of Langston, and he wasn't able to ride to his potential. It got to him. He started riding defensive, and down he went. Remember, the top nine graduate directly to the main event. 25 qualifiers. Look at the way that, oh, a mistake right there. Look at teammate Boniface right there getting a the riding lesson going, okay, well, maybe I don't want to lead this heat race. Maybe it'd be okay to just stick behind Langton, check out his line, and he take that to him in the main event. Boniface has got his own agenda. He's in a battle with Buddy Antonez, the five-time arena cross champion for third place. Antonez is only three points behind the young Frenchman. That could be the battle of the 125 each point race. Langston mechanic waiting to put something on the board. Langston will go around this right-hander and get it. Puts the lap time up there, 57. That's pretty fast. The 250s were running at about a second faster than that, so he's only off by a second. His pace looks good. A couple of mistakes here really kind of affected the, the lap time to this point, but he's capable of going the pace. We'll have to check out what Reed does in the next heat. He was a little quicker than Langston so far today. Buckaloo and Gibson handling it out for Ford. That's Gibson 275 just going through the picture. And Brown number three. Brown in fifth position. Still got Gibson up there ahead of him. Gibson's been in a strong ride. I thought Brown already passed him like once or twice. Gibson's an amazing story. Three times he's qualified both for the 125 and the 250 as a privateer. That means he's dumping one bike and getting right on another bike. That's tough to get used to. The bike feels a little bit different. It's not like you get to ride it around a little bit. You basically get to ride to the starting line and get on and have to get used to it in that opening lap of the heat race. Brown's trying to catch up with Gibson. Gibson has been very impressive in qualifying. He didn't have the race that they told him the main event he wanted. But he's shown his stuff as a privateer in both classes. Brown's having trouble getting around him. Brown's got that inside line, though, as they approach the finish line jump and head into that a little bit easier of the two loop sections after this right-hander. He's been setting himself up for block passes down the inside. He doesn't look like he's going to get the run at Gibson and Eve. That's a huge finish line double jump. I rode around the track yesterday and I asked Jeremy earlier, I was like, is that bigger than usual? He goes, no, nah, it's about the same. So you see these guys just throw that thing upside down off of there when they win the heat race. Man, that just blows my mind. Well, on the final lap, Brad Langston. Looking very, very strong. He could be the spoiler in this 125 East race and spoiler of the great streak that Chad Reed's got going for him. He would like nothing better than to break that win streak. Now, he's got to stay headstrong. It's so much mental. These guys all have the ability to go within tenths of a second of each other. So he's got to be able to deal with the pressure. That's something that Reed does so well. In fact, I talked to him after the practice session today, and I was saying, you know, what were the last times after the second practice session he just shrugged his shoulders? He goes, I don't know. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. He's now four out of five. As far as qualifying heat wins, he goes directly to the main event. Number three, Brown, coming across. Strong ride for Buckalo. He hangs on. Brown just rides right through all those guys going, man, it's going to take a lot more than that to get a win. And he's got time to put that all together for the main event. The KTM of Grant Langston securing a, a relatively easy victory once he got by his teammate Boniface. 
checking out the hottest results page now. In our first qualifying heat, Langston, Boniface, Buckaloo, Brown, and Gibson, the top five. And as we're reminded, the top nine advance to the main event. Looks like Ward's not going to make it out of this heat race. Finishing clear back in 13th, he's going to have to go through the LCQ. Schnell, Horton, Viejo, Andrich, and Karsten. We'll be right back with the second qualifying round from the 125s in New Orleans, in the Superdome. More action coming up. Supercross is being brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and Arena Cross Champion by EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Bourbon Street last night, all kinds of celebrating. Chad Reed is hoping to celebrate his fifth consecutive victory as we return to the Louisiana Superdome. Let's go to trackside now, Davey Coombs. All right, Grant, I think that was your fourth heat race win. Can you get that first main event win tonight? I really hope so. I mean, every weekend it seems to go well. The speed is good, the box running good, and uh, every main event I just seem to struggle with uh, you know, upper body camping. and. Uh, you know, I took some time off this week and went to a doctor, and I think we've kind of figured out roughly what the, the problem has been. And, um, and I just hope that tonight I can put a main event together because I really need, I, I really want to win. It's been a, a bit of a battle with uh, either DNFing or just being on the podium because I've struggled the last like seven, eight laps. So, uh, and I hope tonight can be the night. I really need it. And I hope so too. Good job. Thanks a lot, David. Checking out the lineups now for our second qualifying heat here in the New Orleans Superdome. It's Chad Reed, the points leader. Bunny Anton is looking in that battle for third in the points. Kelly Smith is a good starter. John Dowd, a veteran. Billy Lanovich, uh, he is a 125 West rider, just getting more experience here in the East. Also, don't forget, we've got a helmet camp coming up. That'll be on Ryan Clark, number 54. Ryan Clark with our helmet camp from Albuquerque, New Mexico, LCR Racing. Privateers looking for as much sponsorship as they can get. Clear Channel helping him out as well. Let's but look at, excuse me, Art at number 62 right there, Josh Woods. A lot of talk about him and Stewart getting together at the Mini Olympics last November, and Josh Woods won that battle. So look for him to start improving. The relaxed state of Ricky Carmichael, Mike Brown, right next to him there. Got his game face on as we get set now for the 125 second qualifier. Oh, Jeff Reed went way off the track, number 103. Buddy Antonez is out in front. He's got Kelly Smith right behind him in second place. Carlson right there, wondering if he's got something stuck in his wheel. He does. He's got some wire or cable. Probably one of our TV cables. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, hope not. Yeah, yeah really. Buddy Antonis, been quite a story this year. Five-time Arena Cross champion, and he had the the desire, a great desire, to try it once again in Supercross. First time around in the early 80s. He was riding 125 Supercross action, did very well, ended up third in the 125 West one year, came back in McGrath. Let's check out the field as they go through. 132 Lanovic, 16 is down. Reed just going by on the left. There's 54, that's Reed. Clark carrying our helmet camera. The battle is on for first place, though. Kelly Smith, who was with KTM last year, is on a Yamaha this year. Can't quite get by him in the whoop section. Buddy Antonez has been practicing the whoops religiously. He feels that's the one area that he really needs to improve on. Everything else, his times are comparable. Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's also fit, too. John Tomac, many of you might remember as being a downhill king in mountain biking. He's been training, buddy. 
He's got a lot of confidence in Buddy's ability to go out there and get the job done. I also like, we get a sound bite from Buddy. He's always pretty confident. He's not like, well, we'll see how it goes. He's going, no, I'm here to win. I want to take it to Chad Reed. I don't want him to beat me at every race. I love to hear that out of him. He was an icon in the arena cross area with those five championships, but he took a chance and it started to pay off for him. Here's Chad Reed, number 103. Trying to work his way back. He's already moved up a spot to eighth place. And he's coming around right there with the crash. Hadsel going down. That's going to help him move up. He goes right to the inside of John Dowd right there, who I talked to yesterday. He's got a little bit more power out of that KTM. Trying to improve his start, but we got a battle for the lead now. Kelly Smith, number 34, takes the lead. And it has in second place still with Hadsel, number uh, 231. Up in third. Anthony is only able to double that time. So he loses. Looks like he was going to lose the position to Jessamine. Jessamine putting in an awesome ride in Daytona. Coming from nearly last, if not last. Number 28 is Jessamine on the Suzuki. I'll tell you what, Charles, Kelly Smith, one thing he doesn't need to work on is his start. Like you said, at the start of the speed race, a strong starter. Boy, no kidding. He's been up there every time. Six lap qualifiers. Doesn't matter if you're number one in points or last in points. You've got to qualify for the main event every week. Kelly Smith, number 34, coming at you on the Yamaha. And a great move by Jessamine. Jessamine is really starting to improve. He's coming off the best showing of his career on the most tiring track of the ball. His fourth place in Daytona. Even more impressive when you note that he went through the LCQ to make the main event. And we're right behind. Looks like Jason Thomas. And don't laugh at this vision. Sometimes that's about the best you can see with all that bruise getting on your lenses. That's why they have to tear off. It is Jason Thomas, number 32, and then John Dowd, or uh, Josh Woods, I mean, right up in front of him, then John Dowd. Those guys have lost their contact with Chad Reed, who came through them. But for Chad to catch this battle, I don't know. He's really going to have to show something he hasn't shown so far this season. Looks like the camera needed to uh, have a tear off. 34 on the lead. But look at this. Jessamine making a move in the ropes. Jessamine number 28. Anthony is still in third, number 100. Whoa. Kelly Smith gets it back again. Great battle here with our qualifying for the 125s. Just behind this, we got three-way battle for third. Chad Reed. Kelly. Move. Kelly Smith. Coming on for the 11th of Daytona. His best this season was a fourth in Atlanta. Well, Anthony, as he led this race early, has got Reed breathing down his neck. Reed hardly ever makes a mistake. He's just steady. He's steady. He reminds me of McGrath when McGrath is dominating the 250 class. No mistakes. Everybody around him blows it. He just moves to the field. White flag, final lap. David, you find gate positions as important. In 125 is 250 as they exchange positions once again. Kelly Smith taking over the lead with Jessica Jessica coming back to the inside. Oh, they almost touch on the final lap. That's how competitive these guys are. They've got the main to made. Oh, nice save by Smith right there. They both went into that corner hot and slid off that double jump into kind of a nice little cross-up. Kelly Smith coming up a little bit short. These guys have got enough room on Reed. They can relax just a little bit, but what a ride for Reed. Coming from about 13th, maybe a little further back than that at the very start of the race. Last week, number 28, Jessman, won the LCQ to get into the final. This week, he takes the checkered flag, his first qualifying heat victory of the season. Boy, he's putting it all together, David. Fine ride. I always knew that Jessamine could do this, but he just had so much bad luck and really has never got any momentum coming together. I can't think of Chad Reed losing many races this year. I think he was third. He was third in the first round of qualifying in the uh, Indianapolis, but he won every heat race after that until today. Well, his lap times, though, reflect that he was the fastest rider on the track. A 58 flat for Jessamine right here, his best lap which was his last lap when he needed it most, and Reed was 57 and a half, so Reed's got a little bit on him. Let's recheck the start. 
Now watch Reed. He's right here. It looks like he makes a little bit of contact, but there was no way he was going to make that corner. Beautiful move to jump right through those tough blocks. You see everybody else went down. Reed stays up, jumps back onto the track, and saves what could have been a disaster. Larry Ward going to the LCQ in that first heat. Reed saving that possibility in this heat race. The Suzuki results page now has Jessamine winning, but Kelly Smith in second place. Chad Reed all the way back up to third after that miserable first turn. Short, Antonez, Dowd, Woods, Clark, and Jason Thomas. They qualify directly to the main event. The rest of the field going on. Chaz Reed and others to the LCQ. And we're getting uh, set now for some exciting main event action a little bit later. So when we come back to New Orleans, we'll get back to 125 action. For big upsets, we go to St. Louis, April 6th, the 13th. One of the pillars of Supercross tradition, Pontiac, Michigan, the home of the Cowboys, and then the Winter Olympic Stadium in Salt Lake, April 27th. We have the luxury today of showing you the LCQ for the 125s. Number 10, he's sixth in points. Larry Ward was forced to go to the LCQ. Only four of the top riders out of this LCQ make the final four gates for the main event, David. And there's Billy Lanovich, 132. He was on the podium. Third place the last West Coast round. I expect Ian Ward to battle up front. Look at Hansel and Carlson, as long as, along with Barry Carsten, to also do well in this last chance qualifier. Number 10, Larry Ward out in front as they go the first turn. A pile up, though, to the outside. Lanovich hung up at the end of that, and right here, 135, Carlson. And Steve again. Hurt, too, as well. That's the second time Carlson got hung up in the first corner, but this is right where Larry Ward wants to be. You don't want to be in the middle of this pack, but these guys, if you don't finish in the top four, you got to watch tonight. They're willing to run it in on you. It's a crazy move. Johnny Marley, 901, is in second place. Marley's had some good races this year. There he is on the Yamaha. Correction, he's on a blue Honda. Johnny Marley in second place. Check the start out again, David. Larry Ward right up the middle gets a great start. Controls the first corner. Lanovich over here on the outside. Now watch what happens. He's going to come around the corner and he's got nowhere to go. Carlson right here off the track for the second time. It's one of the reasons he's racing here, just to get more experience. He's out of the top 20 in the 125 West. That allows him to go to the 125 East just to get more experience. A good move on their part. He had a little bit of bad luck at Daytona last week with his arms, but he won his preliminary qualifier this afternoon, wearing a big smile around in the pit, but he can't seem to get off the line. When he does, he rides well, but starts have been a big problem for guys in the 125 class. John Dowd having that problem also, as well as Greg Snell. 66 is Kyston. Boy, is he an aged veteran. <laughs> he only races in the East, works for his father, and uh, rides the East races quite a bit, trying in both 125 and 250 many times. He, he had, I think, like two Ironmans in one year uh, about seven years ago. Making the name call. That's right. That's impressive. He made a big deal out of Travis in the last year in St. Louis, but Travis here is doing a lot. More experience on the track. Money. And also, it, uh, yeah, they're looking for sponsors. They're getting the attention. Reed, number 255, hit the deck of the woods. That's Chess Reed. Chase is back up and running. Shaking his head. Warren, Marley, Karsten, Reed, 
were the top four until this accident. Oh, watch Chase. He's right here. He's going to stick his front wheel in there a little bit too deep. Oh. He actually could have hit a little bit harder than that. He was a little bit fortunate the way he was able to kind of slowly hit the deck. But Close, almost did it. Lanovich. Lanovich had all that. That looks like him. He's the only KTM rider in this race. He was trying to jump up on that plateau. The section I've talked about that leads up to the finish line. It's, you know, this track is a little bit easier for some of these guys. You let your guard down a little bit. And one of these little sharp edges catches you. It caught him. Looks like he's going to be okay, but he's got a, that's probably just half frustration arc because he's such a fast rider, but he keeps having these kind of problems. Number 10, Larry Ward, our leader. Ward and Dowd haven't been the occasional contenders that I anticipated in the season start. How about you, David? Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. You know, I was just looking at a picture outside Xavier from France who brought a magazine over. He was showing me all the riders and what they're doing now. A lot of them are still involved in the sport. Larry Ward is still racing. I mean, that's just great to see him out there and, and in contention, too. His best finish so far this year was a fourth at the opener in Indy. But he showed us a good steady climb in that race from 10th place after a slow start. The checkers and Larry Ward is in the 125 main event. Here comes Marley and Karsten. The top four only go to the main event. Looks like Bruce might have made it. Hansel will get the asterisk gas card of $125, replacing fifth. Unable to go to the main event. Thanks to Dr. Bartner, the race doctor. The last chance Nissan results. Larry Ward, Johnny Marley, Barry Karsten, and Michael Blos. They've made the main event. Our writer of the week from EA Sports is not only the oldest writer in the field, but one of the most popular. 35-year-old John Dowd spends 90 seconds with our Jeff Emmy. Dowdy, he's inspired. He's taken the inside, catches a toe in the dirt, and takes over second place. All right, John, the first question. The 30-plus have been for a few years. We won't say what it is. <laughs> and you're back in the 135 class. What's with that? I don't know. I just, uh, you know, last year I took last winter off, and uh, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do that again this year. You know, I, I felt like I came out in the spring, and I, was, I wasn't really ready for the outdoors and stuff. So, and I, at the same time, I wasn't sure about doing the whole Supercross series. So, you know, I kind of thought about doing this East thing. It's only seven races, and I, you know, I can kind of, it's a lot less traveling for me, you know, being on the East Coast and all. So, it, it just kind of fit what I was looking for. Dowdy gets the jump, takes the lead! Yeah. What's different now, this time around, on a 125, than, let's say, when you first started Supercross and, and when you rode your uh, 125 championship season? Um, I think probably my my biggest thing is, you know, my own, kind of have my own team here. You know, I, I don't have a, a big factory rig and a bunch of bunch of factory guys kind of around. I feel like the pressure around me and, and myself is, is a lot less, and which in turn, I think, enables me to have a little more fun with it. John Dowd sees the checkers waving. Dowdy has come back in great style. You're looking for a win or a podium, what would you be happy with? Um, I think right now I'd be happy with a podium. The, the first two rounds I wasn't uh, wasn't really you know up to speed to win, but uh, at this point I think I'd be, I'd be happy with a podium. Dowd will be 36 in August. Got his first factory ride in 1995. He won the 125 West in 1998 and a very very popular writer from the big easy new orleans louisiana will return with chad reed's attempt for five straight 125 eastern victories it's all coming up next back in the superdome in new orleans Getting ready for the 125 East main event. Several impressive riders in qualifying. More than one capable of breaking Chad Reed's streak of four in a row. Saturday, May 4th, it's pay-per-view time. Live from Las Vegas, the 125 East-West shootout between Chad Reed, James Stewart, don't rule out Grant Langston, the others, plus the 250cc season ender, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, live. Pay-per-view from Las Vegas. The main event starting grid now for the 125s. Grant Langston looking for his first win of the season. Very impressive. Brandon Jessamine won his first qualifying heat. 
Steve Boniface in third. Kelly Smith, he's got two old shots already out of four races this year. Chad Reed, the points leader, along with Buckaloo. Brown, Short, Gibson, and others. The 32nd board is up. We're ready to go for our main event, 125 from the Superdome in New Orleans. See number three, Mike Brown, all the way over to the inside. A lot of guys have been getting pushed wide in that first corner. Horn sideways. We're set to go. On the base on the inside. Kelly Smith has the whole shot. Gets shoved off the track. In front of base out in front. Brandon Jessamine in good position in second. And there goes Chad Reed. Reed to the outside to circle around and take the lead away in those Wolves Davis. Goodbye. Get that guy to lead, and it's over. He came from so far behind his heat rate. But you know what? His lap times were not faster than Langston. So Langston, if he can get around into second, he might be able to take something to read, especially since he's coming from behind. You now, Davey had talked about that earlier with their team. Their strategy was to put the pressure on. Take another look at the start. Boniface with a great jump, gets into the corner. He's going to shove 34, Kelly Smith, all the way to the bail as he goes from first for a battle for first to last. Langston couldn't get the front end down. He did a wheelie off there, and that's why he didn't get out to a great break. But number 36 in second place, Steve Bonavase, is up there along with Lee. Jessamine in third. Ward in fourth. Ward coming through the LCQ. Is in fourth in front of Grant Langston in fifth. Been, uh, he hasn't been winning the whole shots. Here comes Ward. Number 10. He passes Jessamine. Looks like he's on a mission right now. Well, he clipped Jessamine uh, by accident right there. Jessamine almost high shot a good save, but he lost the position to Langston. So, the front four still pretty close. Reed at the front, Langston running fourth. Still got Reed in his sight. I was going to say, David, that uh, Chad hasn't been winning any hole shots. The only hole shot he recorded was in Minneapolis, and that's the only race he led all 50 laps. But he started in fifth in the opening round, started in eighth in Atlanta, started third in Daytona. You know, it's almost like he likes to start in the contending pack, but not out in front. Well, he'll take a lot easier with the hole shot, I can tell you that. Langston looks like he wants to try to make a move on Ward, number 10. Langston comes to the inside. Langston in the third. This is the kind of race Langston needs to ride. Build confidence the whole time. Keep Chad Reed in his sight. He's got to make it to the end to have a chance. Keep him in contention. It's so far, so good. Langston bringing some of his support crew closer to him. Those that helped uh, give him the combination to win the World Motocross title. He's in third right now, Langston. Chad Reed is getting some real pressure from Boniface. So we got Reed, the Australian, Boniface, the Frenchman, and then Langston, the South African. Where's Diego, the Mexican? A real international series this year without going abroad. Hey, look at the most powerful bikes in this field, and they're running the top four. Bookended by those 254 strokes. Langston blocked past the teammate, and the two KTM sandwiched in between. These guys are really putting their horsepower to work. Brown is starting to catch this pack. Chasing down Jessamine. There they are at the top of the screen. Langston just not wanting to let Chad Reed get out too big of a lead before making his move, that's for sure. That's well, exactly the opposite of what happened last weekend in Daytona. Langston was out front, and Reed worked his way into second, closed the gap, started applying the pressure. Langston's doing it to Reed now. I'm really surprised, Art, that Reed has not been able to pull away. Langston tremendously fast in catching him. Could it be turned about spare play? Well, we've seen Langston ride very aggressive against Mike Brown, and that might be what it takes to get around Reed on the track. If Reed doesn't make very many mistakes, then they have to move him out of the way or be a little bit lucky. Right now, Buddy Anthony has gone by Langston. Beautiful move. Langston on Chad Reed. Grant Langston in the Wolves. I just was talking about how he might have to move him around because Reed doesn't make many mistakes. Reed made one at the approach to the triple. He didn't do the right timing, and Langston was all over it. 
But Reed's patient, Art. He, this isn't the end of the main event. He knows that. He stay close and put the pressure back on Langston. The pass for the lead. Well, he had just completed it right there. Reed did the wrong timing at the approach of that triple, obviously. Langston had a little bit quicker line doubling into it. Easy for the block pass. But he's not able to pull away. Do you think this is where Chad Reed likes to be? He feels comfortable right there. Well, when you got a guy breathing down your neck and catching you as fast as Blanky did, yeah, it feels a little bit better to be back in second as long as Blanky doesn't start to pull away. Stay right there. And believe me, when it gets down to, to uh, 12 laps to go, 13, 14 laps to go, Blanky's going to feel some heat. 125, 20, 15 laps in their main event. Let's go track side, baby. Well, this goes back to what we were talking about at the top of the show with Grant Langston. He had to get in front of Chad Green, get him out of his head. And believe it or not, earlier this week when I was talking to Grant, he said, I would like to start third and stay there so I can be more relaxed as the race goes on. And guys, that's exactly what he did. And you know what? This is the best Grant Langston's look all year in a main event. Yeah, I totally agree. Even though he's been up front before, he never came from behind, went through the pack, and it's, he's pulling away from Reed right now, Art. I mean, for a little bit there, it looks like Reed's going, all right, you take the lead. I'll sit, I'll sit right here. Pass you back at the end. That's why I say we can't rule him out for the uh, East-West shootout either, because he, he's playing the spoilers role right now, 53 points behind the leader. We'll be right back with more main event action from the Superdome in New Orleans. The 125s are really cranking it out. It's Langston, Reed, Boniface, Ward, and Brown, our top five. The biggest names in motocross and off-road racing have an even bigger name under them. Suzuki. Do you? Chad Reed, his very first American Supercross victory. The checkers are waving. Chad Reed has now won two in a row. Checkered flag. Chad Reed, three for three in his American debut. Langston, 1.59 seconds ahead of Chad Reed, endangering Reed's streak. Of four straight to start this 125 each season. Langston is just looking tough. He has to be mistake free because Reed is right there. You see Reed jump through the whoop section that time. He's just, he, yeah, look at what they do in NASCAR and car racing. They, they just go through the race and they continue to look for the best line, get the car set up right. Looks like Reed just decided to hang back and I think it's a little breather. Study what Langston was doing and get comfortable out there, and now he's starting to apply the pressure again. What a ride for Ward coming out of the LCQ. Absolutely. He's putting the pressure on Boniface. That's for sure for third place. Now, Boniface made it so bad in Daytona last week. Now I'm sort of doubting him a little bit. Maybe Larry Ward is, too. Larry had a chance to run up front last week in Daytona and was out on the first lap with some sort of bike problem, but he's back here. Here comes Ward up on the face. The black pass. Good and clean. Ward moves to the third. Ward is looking for his first party. What we say at the beginning of the telecast, where did the veterans go? The over 30 crowd. They haven't been on the podium yet. Can he hold on as Grant Langston leads this race with Chad Reed right behind him in second place? You can hear the Supercross series live on the uh, Supercross webcast. More information, check with ESPN.com. Langston, Chad Reed has not left him off the hook. No, they are they pulled away pretty good from Ward. Got a, oh, I'd say about a nine-second lead back to third. So it's just between these two guys. Reed can make a mistake trying to go for the win. Still, if he goes down, pick the bike up and probably still get second. But he, this guy wants to win. He'll be disappointed with anything but a win. We've heard Davey talk about it. We've heard uh, Langston himself tell us that he's had some arm pump problems, but it doesn't seem like the pressure's bothering him right now with Chad Reed. And now he's starting to pull a little lead. Yeah, if it was going to happen to him, side arms, it would be happening right about now. He would start experiencing it, but a oh, little mistake right there. That's all Reed wants to see. That just lets him know, okay, well, this guy isn't as solid as he looks like when he first came by and started pulling away. So he's being patient right now. Look at that, Brown, in front of Boniface. 
by Brown. He doesn't want to get too far out of that points race. And Brown! Bottom base picks it over again. I always talk about how tough it is to go through the loop and stay in that rut. And that's a perfect example. He got a little off balance. Gets it right back. Mike Brown moving into fourth. Here comes Jessamine. Well, oh, Jessamine's been fast, too. Jessamine, very unique lines on the track at times. Jessamine winning that qualifying heat. It's pounding Brown, number three on the Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Speaking of hounding right now, back out front. Reed is really starting to put it on Grant Langston. So we've got two great battles going. One for the lead and one for third place. The crowd is looking at the leader now. Chad Reed, how's he gonna get by Langston this time? At Daytona last week, he was able to rub him off the track. Well, if there's gonna be any tense riding, it's gonna be now with all the pressure that Reed's starting to apply. Like I was saying, as the lap wind out, what I say, lap 12, 13, well, they're coming up on it, and Reed's all over him now. In a race like this, you haven't been back in it before. What's running through that mind of Grant Langston? Just please, just put out the white flag. Let this be over with. It, it just kills you. But the pressure, it doesn't go away. And the only way I was able to handle it was to say, okay, let me just pull this guy off for one more lap. You just break the race into smaller pieces because if you think about it, it's three or four more laps. Seems too overwhelming. So a lap at a time. You never know what might happen to Reed back there. You might make a mistake, and we'll get a little room to breathe. Reed following Langston through the woods. Tell him to breathe and stay smooth. That's the message for Langston. That's easy to put on the board, but look at this pressure. He cannot afford one mistake. Everything's got to be perfect, and he can't leave the door open if he approaches some of these corners. He takes the inside right there. Of course, the championship is the thing for Chad Reed. Langston is out of the running for that. We've got to take a break. Can Chad Reed catch up and pass Grant Langston?
especially on the last lap as they're both approaching Kelly Smith who gets those good starts for the Wayne. Langston just doubled that triple. Look at the lead now. Yes. He gave it everything he had. Right now he's just dead. He's, his spirit is broken. And Reed is beating him again. So Reed, like I said at the top of the show, he's got everyone psyched out. Langston had his chance. He rode excellent the first half of this race. But he... Supercross races in the very first U.S. professional season. He moves up the ladder for consecutive wins. He's now tied for fourth on the all-time list with Denny Stevenson and Nathan Ramsey with five consecutive 125 victories. Amazing. Look at that. He's wheeling all the way through the woods, making all this stuff look easy. Well on his way to becoming the first Australian to win an American Supercross title. The Suzuki results of our main event here for the 125s tonight. It's Chad Reed, Grant Langston, and Larry Ward on the podium. Ward on the podium for the first time this year. Brown has to lose more points in the battle for the 125 championship in the East. The reigning AMA 125 East Region Supercross and Arena Cross Champion. Speed Stick, Power of Nature, for protection that smells good. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Welcome back to the Superdome, where the 125 East Supercross Division is seeing an Australian put himself in line for a championship in his very first year. Our Honda flashback, Chad Reed celebrating his fifth consecutive victory. He proved tonight it's not just speed that wins races, but strategy and patience played a big role tonight. He's with our Diddy Coons. Chad, that was an unbelievable race. Way to come up at the very end. Was that the strategy all along? For some reason, just the last two days on this track, I just didn't, I didn't feel 100%. So I just, you know, I just wanted a good start and just being there at the end, I knew that, you know, 15 laps that I would be, you know, strong at the end. And I saw Grant and, yeah, I was just off this weekend. He was a little bit faster than me and I just put the pressure onto him. It worked out perfect. You know, I was just riding around behind him, just waiting for mistakes. And, uh, that was a great race. On the Suzuki point standings, Chad Reed taking a 23-point lead on Mike Brown. And Steve Boniface extending his lead over Buddy Antonez and Grant Langston to seven points. John Dowd, ninth in the point standings. Our next ESPN2 Supercross shows come to you from Houston's Astrodome. Round number 11 on Saturday, the 30th of March, the 250s. The next day for the 125s. Art Ekman, David Bailey, David Coombs, thanking you for being with us. Coming up next, you'll see the international Timbers voice. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.